Hello everyone, I am Division of Chaos, and today I'm joined by Richard Gumbasa Coombs, also known as Gumbasa on the internet. Hello Richard, uh, how are you? Hello there. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello there. Um, uh, as you said, my name is uh, Richard, or Gumbasa on the internet. Uh, I started voice acting about a year, a year and a half ago, um, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, just trying out a bunch of new things. Uh, primarily what I do for a living is as uh, a writer and an audiobook recorder. And how is that process g going? Uh, is that a little bit different than fan projects? It is a little bit. I work like uh, I work primarily through uh, through uh, Amazon and their uh, their audiobook company uh, Audible. So there is a lot of flexibility in scheduling there. I mostly work uh, from a home studio. I see. And what kind of work are you currently doing? And what kind of projects are you currently doing? Uh, right now, I'm working on a, a few audiobook projects, which I'm under a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't really discuss those right now. But uh, a few big projects that I'm working on okay. are... Um, I'm working with a good friend called Obob Scribbler on a few uh, long radio plays that she's writing. The first one being called Heroically Tale of Heroically Heroic Heroes, which is, uh, by the name alone, you can probably tell that it's a comedy. And she also is starting up another one uh, more recently called No Place Like Home, which should be coming out uh, relatively soon. And can people buy your audiobooks on Amazon.com? Uh, yes, if you go to audible.com... Is, is it free? Uh, the, the, the audiobooks that I do um, are, are for sale uh, on audible.com. If you search for me as narrator, any books that I have recorded up to this point will appear on Audible uh, for sale. How do you usually uh, audition for like uh, uh, fan projects or audible projects? Uh, for audible projects, I usually go with things that are fantasy and science fiction. Those are my favorite. Uh, those are my favorite genres to work in, and the same goes for fan projects, especially with original fan projects like radio plays and whatnot. Uh, when it comes to fan projects, I basically try out for a little bit of everything. So long as it's um, focusing on something that I'm interested in, then I am willing to give it a shot. Okay, but for Audible projects, you do still need to audition, right? Uh, yes, the authors who are interested in having an audiobook Besides. produced, they uh, they put up a uh, they they put up an audition, which is usually about a four to five page excerpt from their book. Uh, they have you read it and narrate it. And you send it into them, and they'll decide whether or not they want you to to work on it. And how did you get into that? How did you get into vo uh, audible voice acting or voice acting in general? It was basically on a whim. I started uh, I started doing voice acting, like I said, about a year and a half ago, mostly just because I really got into the the comic dramas that I started seeing around YouTube, and I decided I wanted to be a part of that. But um, afterwards, I just started trying out for more varied projects, and eventually I started doing uh, fan fiction readings for, for fun. Uh, mostly pretty good fan fictions, actually. And from there, I discovered that, uh, well, there's a place where I could go and audition to do full audiobook readings and actually get paid for it. So uh, that's basically how that came about. And do you have like any previous acting experience before you did uh, the the comic reading? Um, most of my acting experience was basically from college. Uh, I went there for creative writing as a major and took a theater minor. So I did end up doing a lot of theater work while I was at college, but I haven't done any uh, on stage acting since then. Okay, so you usually now do uh, audiobooks only? Uh, pretty much, yes. 
And when you did this fan project, what made you decide to audition for Twilight Princess? I just thought that it was a, a pretty interesting idea taking uh, something like Legend of Zelda, which for the longest time has been pretty much voiceless, and trying to give these characters voices because it's always been interesting to me the fact that all of these characters have no voice. and It's just interesting to try and think about what sort of voice they would have if Nintendo ever decided to try out voice acting in a Zelda game. For me, personally, I also uh, agree with that. I would rather always do games that do not have voice acting already uh, for the projects that I want to do, you know. Because then you ha ha don't have a previous idea of how those voices sound already. Um, from what you've seen of uh, Twilight Princess, how do you think, how do you feel about the project? How I handled it and how it turned out? Are you satisfied or would you have done something different? I thought it turned out really, really well. Uh, the it, It's got to be a bit of a process to to combine voice acting and gameplay uh, the way that you have done uh, post, post uh, recording gameplay. That's something that uh, not a lot of people have done before, I don't think. And I, I think it turned out really, really well. I think people have done it before, it's just not as well matched up as I have. Mm. Uh, from all the pro voices in this project, maybe you've heard some of the voices. What is the favorite that you've seen and what's, what's your favorite to do? The My favorite one to do was probably Yeto, just because I enjoy... Um, <laughs> I enjoy doing voices of characters that have odd speech patterns or aren't necessarily human. So they're they're always a lot more fun to me uh, to do. Uh, when it comes to other voices that I heard that I really liked, I thought uh, I I thought uh, Zelda's voice was particularly well done. Yeah, uh, Ultimate Baka or Blue Sky, she's a very good voice actress. I yes, never very to much so. Her, like. She always does it in one take. She always does it in one take, and I am like, am I t tip my hat to you. And if you're looking back at all the voices that you did, is there any voice that you would have done differently now that you've done it, listening back to it? I remember that we had a lot of difficulty getting Renato's lines down uh, perfectly, and I think I do kind of regret that because I had a lot of... Uh, I did have a lot of difficulty pinning down just what sort of voice a character like that would have. Uh, I remember, in particular, you said that uh, one of the big things I could have done better was to give him a bit more uh, emotion, and emoting in his voice was a lot more difficult for me. So yes. if I could have altered that, I think I would have done that much differently. Yes, Renato is a very, you know, honest, very... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, honest character. I don't know how, how else to put it, but very open, very honest in his, you know, emotions and such. Yes. And uh, when you look at how d things, uh, how I handled my projects and how Audible or uh, the, the radio plays um, handle that project, do you, which you know do you prefer i i have more like a somewhat personal touch uh what do you think is like the differences in how i handle it in the post of friends or uh, professional handle th these kind of projects when it comes to audible there actually isn't a whole lot much difference between recording for audible and recording for a fan project mostly because when you're working on audible you, you do have a set deadline that Amazon will give you to get it done, but for the most part, you're, you're more working with the author themselves, who oftentimes are not professional people, at least when it comes to, uh, to audio production. So a lot of times, they're, they're very fast and loose with, with how they work on it. So, um, so in a lot of ways, working with the author on Audible is a lot I like working with a director uh, for a fan project like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't get enough feedback because they don't know, right? 
Yeah, you don't get a whole lot of feedback when you're working with the okay, authors. Yeah. And when it comes to fan projects, much like working with authors, it depends on who you're working with. I mean, you treated this project very, very professionally. You were on top of everything, pretty much every step of the way. Who needed to get lines in, what needed to be changed, what needed to be re-recorded. And I've worked with other people who were much more uh, lethargic when it came to, to getting things done. I think that's also because I have, uh, myself, have acting experience. If you have acting experience of your own, you you have a certain idea of what you want. Where if you don't, then it's usually, you know, take whatever you, the best you can get, mm. basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, after all seeing this, you know, how, I'm, how my project <clears throat> turned out and such... Would you ever do like uh, a, a fan project again like this? I think I would. I had a lot of fun with it, and it it was a it was an interesting experience doing so many different voices for for a single project. Usually, I end up with only one or two at a time, uh, but in this one, I was doing several different uh, several different voices, which was a, a whole lot of fun. And if, if people want to recruit you. Can they find you on uh, on Gumbasa or on Audible or how do, you, do people get in contact with you? Um, I am on uh, the internet. I do a lot of my voice work under Richard Coombs VA or uh, Goomba Brony on uh, YouTube. And I use the handle Gumbasa for pretty much everything uh, when it comes to uh, places like uh, the Voice Acting Alliance or uh, when I'm trying out for something. That's pretty much always the name that I use. And uh, as you said, you know, now I'm doing more Audible uh, work than fan projects, but do you still do fan projects? I do fan projects all the time. Because audio is... Uh, because Audible is such a, uh, a, a wonderfully uh, flexible place to work in terms of deadlines, and I get to basically set my own schedule for when I record... I still work on fan projects right alongside uh, recording for Audible all the time. Are there any other fan projects you're currently doing that are in production at this moment that people can find? Uh, well, like I said, um, I am in uh, a few big projects with uh, Obob Scribbler on YouTube. Uh, she's already released the first two episodes of uh, Heroic Tale and... Um, the first two episodes of No Place Like Home have been uh, have been completed, but uh, they're not going to be put out until episode three is finished. Okay, I see. So you can pe find people find you there. If there's anything in this project that you would have changed in the way how, how I did it, is there anything that you would have changed? I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. I think things, at, at least from my perspective, went very smoothly, and I am. I'm I'm very pleased with how the final product uh, turned out. So you would consider this project a success? Then? Indeed, I would. Yes. Is there anything you would like to ask me, or is there a question you would like to ask the audience? Um. No, I can't think of anything. Not really. Well, I just have one last question for you. How busy is your schedule at this moment? My schedule is. Uh, it's fairly full, but um, I'm the kind of person who always foolishly uh, keeps adding things to it all the time. So no matter how full so, it gets, I can always manage to squeeze in just a little bit more. So if I were to do another project, you would be willing? Uh, I definitely think I would, yes. Is it only for, like, uh, like Zelda? Because you probably already know that I'm going to do it. Skyward Sword at some point. Oh, I'd love to do Skyward Sword, but not only Zelda. I would work with you again on, on any uh, sort of project like this, I think. Okay. Just any remarks that you have, like, just about a project or something? I, uh, or I just hope that a lot of people get to see it and a lot of people enjoy it. Uh, just like any other project that I've done, that's, that's basically my only hope for, for anything that I'm in. Well, I think that wraps up pretty much up around my, uh, my questions. You were pretty fast at answering questions. Usually people <laughs> take that time, but you are a very busy person, right? 
pretty much yes but uh but i've i've had some time to think about what i would uh, what i would answer for for questions like this before okay that's that's a bit weird but whatever and thank you very much richard i have been the vision of chaos together with uh, richard coombs um no i don't have that other thing ready <laughs> like give me a moment mm -hmm. so professional Richard Coombs has been the voice of Jagal, Agoran, Ordona, the Postman, Prince Rallis, Renato, the Sages, the Sage of Fire, and Yedo. And I hope you enjoy. Uh, I and I will see you next time for more interviews of these of the same content. Bye, everybody. Yeah.